Yo, it's all for lover and warm Pacific greetings to you all. Welcome to episode eight, eight of the How to Make a Boomer Shooter series. In this episode, we are gonna pretty much be wrapping up all of the basics um, and just cover a lot of the elements within this engine that I haven't really talked about, just so you guys have a fair grasp of like the rest of the um, tools at your disposal. But yeah, it's pretty much a wrap up. This will be the final episode for the basics of this engine. And then the next episodes or videos, I should say, I'll be making will cover like um, a lot more intricate things within intermediate to advanced level. So like scripting, playing around with triggers and terminals, um, going over the finite state machine system within this engine. But I'm saying that, yeah, so let's jump straight into it. Eh? So the first thing I want to cover is, as we know, we have covered a bit of the hazard block, but there are two extra blocks here that we haven't used yet. So what are these? Well, um, the invisible block is pretty self-explanatory. It's just an invisible block that um, you can collide um, with. So what that pretty much means is it'll be an invisible block that you can place whether you want to traverse into specific areas of your game and you just want it to be like a um, secret so the player doesn't actually see what this is you can use this in order to i don't know have a way for them to traverse in that area you can block certain areas so there's invisible wars so that's what that block is for and then we also have the enemy barrier block and what this does is essentially when you place this block the enemy cannot um, navigate or move through this block so it's kind of blocking the area of which that they can traverse they can shoot you however through this block they just can't walk through it so let me place these two blocks down just as an example just to show you guys pretty much their functionality here yeah? so I'll jump into the game <laughs> random staircase Random block should be here, as you can see, invisible, but I'm colliding with it and I cannot go through it. And then you're dead. See, so the barrier he will not. Mm. So, yeah, two simple blocks, but can be very effective depending on where you use them. So, those are quite interesting to use. So, have a play of them when you can. Alrighty, the next place we want to go to is objects. Now, we have these two rules I haven't covered yet. So, health. What is health? Well, these are pretty much just health pickups. So, if you lose health by getting damage from an enemy or a hazardous block or however in the game you get damage, you can use these in order for the player to pick them up and to um, just gain health again. And the same goes for armor. Now, armor doesn't show within the game um, just because if we go to our advanced tools and go to HUD, if you hover or click over, I should say, the armor, it will have this tick box here which says hide when empty. So if we don't have any armor um, or any armor picked up, this icon won't show. But if we do pick up that armor, then obviously it'll show the armor and the amount that we have collected. Now, to be able to edit the parameters of each of these, what you'll need to do is go to object settings. And here we have our health setting and our armor setting. Now, if we click these, as you can see, you can pretty much change the values of how much health is regained when you collect each of these pickups, um, HP one to HP four. And I believe it's one, two, three, and four. So that's for that. And this also goes for armor. It's pretty much the same menu. So, yep, that's that. And you can also, I believe, yes, you can have um, import your own images for health, keys, and armor. And it will pretty much just have an image um, here. These are the reference images. That's why I didn't um, make my own, just because they're kind of already here. And I haven't imported any sounds, but um, the sounds pretty much is when you pick up this item what sound will play when this item is obtained so yeah that's how to edit those we can i can put an example of it in here so i'll put this here and then we'll go into our game once more and if i collect it 
as you can see i got my armor stat showing now and if i take damage and he will lose that and then if i click this i regain health 15. cool so those are those elements there what else have i not covered so let's go for exit eh? this one would be quite easy so if i grab the exit block and i place it let's just say i put it on this window here just for um, an example it has to be on a wall in order for you to be able to actually exit the map and for me to be able to use this block when i walk towards it i'll have to press the interaction key or e in order for me to go either to the next map or to finish the game and that's pretty much how that block works so let's go and use it now so let's say i go to that window which was the middle one if i press e it should go straight back to the main menu as you can see and if i were to make another map just by coming to our map section that we haven't touched since the first episode i'll click new map here let me name it something else let's go for next level and let me actually navigate to my project shooting game maps oh. maps and we'll go next level so now i have this here and in order for me to be able to actually enter into this map there has to be a another um, player object for where you want your player to spawn this one alrighty so let me save my map okay now let's test this for real let's go back to our test area one and if i go towards my exit button now i'm in the new map which is cool and this was the second example i wanted to show you guys so this cube right here as you can see has a different texture on each side and how is that possible well let me just exit out here how i was able to do that and the reason why i put it in I was supposed to explain it quite a while ago, but with how this is set up, I'm using a cube map, uh, like a cube map texture, hence why the texture looks different compared to the other ones. Now, if I were to bring that up as an example, we'll go into our textures, our walls, and we jump into this. As you can see, the layout of this texture is different because I wanted to be able to make sure that each individual side could be mapped as a different texture and this is kind of how that looks when you're trying to make a texture with different um, sides on each you can always customize each individual um, side depending on what you're wanting or the effect that you want in your game but this is essentially how it will look if you're just if you're wanting to customize each individual size side i should say but then if you go to a texture like this one which I said, I do use this for the door, but this two side can also be used if you want to use the bottom texture, I believe for the sides and the top texture for the top. Let's see if I can place that in just to see as an example. So the top side will be for the sides and the bottom side will be for the top and bottom of the texture. So, instead of having to jump into this map via um, having to go to the exit in the first map another way in which i'll be able to jump into um, testing just this map itself i can go to the build settings and then if i just go test current map it will let me test the map that i'm currently working on and not have to go through every exit button in order to just get to this level so let's do that here i'm here if i jump on this step as you can see the texture on the top is the texture that was on the bottom of that on the textures i've made and then the sides will be the door texture so yeah um use that how you would like 
it's quite interesting actually um, what you can get up to with that and then I think last but not least a good way to end it is pretty much how you, how do I build my game like how do I make it so it's just an application that I can put in a zip file send it to people so they can test my game and play it well that is very simple um, all we really need to do is just go to this build setting here we can also use this right here but this just makes it a bit easier so if I click build and pack what that will do is it will build the game pack it up and you'll find a folder within where the engine is set or saved where you've put it a build folder and when you click on that it will have all of the game files needed and what I would recommend is pretty much just naming it however you'd like um, compressing it into a zip folder or any way shape or form you'd like and then that'll be the easy way for you to just send it out just so you can send it to people that can play your little creation on their own devices they do not need easy fps editor in order to play it they should be able to play it out of the box so yeah but um before we build let's go into our game settings and our game info settings now by jumping into here this will be where we can name our game, which is pretty cool. So if we name it here, once we obviously build and export it, um, the folder should be named this and the game should be named this as well. But this is a good way for you to name your game. So let's just call it shooting game for me. And then you can also within these um, settings enable certain, um, I guess, features within the game so map enabled crouch enabled jump enabled flashlight enabled there is a flash app within this game engine by pressing f you'll be able to use it but if you don't want them to use it because it's not really needed you can disable it there um yeah separate cursor for active decorators use active decorations on button press only um free look this is pretty much like instead of using tank controls where i have to move the camera separately with another set of controls or i believe it's just left and right i'll be able to use the mouse to look around so that's for that real recoil if you are using the recoil settings within your weapons be sure to click this just in my opinion because um how the recoil works with out this being ticked is it'll still shoot in the same position in which you're aiming at but your cursor will just move up it or you'll start looking up just to get that recoil effect but you're still shooting in the same like vicinity if you, the recoil wasn't there and if you click real recoil it pretty much reacts to other the the way in which you shoot will react to camera movement as well or the recoil so as you start moving up the recoil or your shots will start moving up as well you can allow quick saves within your game, which is F5, F9, and that's pretty cool because that'll be quick save, quick load. Um, so when they're in the game and you they want to create a save state, they can use that to save quickly and load quickly. And then also starting weapon. And I can select any of the weapons I've created throughout this tutorial as a starting weapon for the player to already have, especially when they're going into a new map or their um, weapons should carry over between maps. I can't confirm nor deny that, but yes. And then these ones here, um, item collection flash. I don't know if you've noticed, but every time we collect a weapon, there'll be a flash just to indicate that you have picked up something. This can modify the color of what that flash is, the opacity of it, and so on and so forth, as well as the injury flash, which is the same, an indicator that shows you, um, I guess, when you're being damaged, you can change the color of that you can change yeah it's pretty self-explanatory but those are the parameters that we have in here and if i were to go to build and build and pack the game it's saving it now and it's built it successfully and builds shooting games so if i were to go to where my engine is now uh, and then as you can see there's a folder here called builds if i click on that it'll have my shooting game and then it'll have the game right here. And if I click it, it runs natively on my system called shooting game. <laughs> and if I jump into it, I've got my game playable outside of the engine. And if I were to go here, it'll go into this test area. And then I go here and then my game's right here. So yeah, those are pretty much all the points I believe I've missed, please. Leave a comment or anything if you feel like I, I've missed anything. 
or if you want something explained but if it's something that hasn't been covered within these basic tutorials i urge you guys to read the manual there's documentation provided by clicking this button here let's say we'll click on that and we'll click manual just so i can show you guys an example and by going through all of these elements here it pretty much explains a lot of the things that i've kind of gone into with this video series so please read this um there are some things i haven't covered but that's what this is here for you can go through it and i might make a video about it in the future so please go through these it's a massive help especially if you're a beginner in this engine but um yeah thank you guys so much for watching this series so far it took me a lot of time and courage to be able to make something like this so i am very thankful for the eyes that are watching this and hopefully it was very helpful to you guys please keep your eyes peeled for the standalone videos on a lot more advanced features that we'll jump into i might jump into our finite state machines or fsm when it comes to this engine just because i feel like there's been a lot of inquiries about it um but yeah thank you guys so much i really appreciate it um, when it comes to the support and everything and um yeah appreciate you guys and catch you in the next one eh